today's discussion is about um, branding the business community. And, you know, branding essentially is, is communication to where signaling to each other to get like-minded people all on the same people, the same kind of values and things to, to catch their attention and, and hopefully get them to join up, collaborate together. So today we have Tara Jenkins. She's from Portland, Maine, and Tara is the founder of Conscious Revolution. Tara is also a certified uh, conscious capitalism consultant, B Corp expert, and um, has a lot of expertise in the in the topics that we're going to be talking about today. So I, and I wanted to kick off this discussion um, talking about honeybees, because apparently I just found this out recently, but honeybees are not born known knowing how to do a proper waggle dance. They have to be taught. Apparently there's about 17 different scents or pheromones or whatever that are involved in the process and about 30 or so different uh, movements involved in actually, you know, communicating to the other bees where the, you know, where the nectar is. And then to complicate things more, so so basically young bees have to learn from older bees how to do, do a proper job of it. To complicate things even further, during the summer months, bees typically live only 15 to 40 days. So you roughly have to do all of this cultural training, you know, kind of thing every month or so to, you know, keep the whole hive and community going and, and going on successfully. So bees are super organisms as are wolves, tooth whales, elephants, um, ants, and ourselves and some other primates. And what that really means is that we can't, we can't care for and nurture the next generation by ourselves. We need, a, you know, a hive or a tribe or a village or whatever to, to make that happen. And part of what we're doing when we do that is, you know, is obviously, you know, resources and things like that for the future generation. But a, a big part of that is passing on the information of how um, to do things, social norms, things like that, that help us work and collaborate and, and function together um, effectively um, so that the next generation can also can can also thrive. So we're basically busily passing that sort of um, stuff along. And one of those constructs that we pass along to the, each generation is how do we do business? How do we, you know, collaborate together, um, exchange goods and services and things like that. And the system that we have right now that's pre the predominant system is deeply flawed. It's suboptimal for the next generation. If we keep doing that, it's going to be a disaster and train wreck. So there are organizations like Conscious Capitalism and B Corps and others um, that are working on, on promoting a different way of, of doing these things. That are, and this different way is, is you know, very closely aligned and we all have various different brands, different ways of signaling to each other what it is that we're doing, how we view it, how it how it works, um, trying to pull together different, you know, different groups and and uh, catch the attention of different people and, and get them to join up. And and you know, typically in the system, um, if we can get maybe eleven percent or so of a group to adopt a new way of looking at things, that can frequently cause a, a cascade through the rest of the system and, you know, a whole bunch of new systems, um, the new system can get adopted by the majority. Um, so I think that's essentially what we're all about. And then so this discussion is about all those different brands in those communities and, and working and collaborating together. So, yeah, so I'll, I'll stop there and, and set that as the, as the, you know, framework for what we're talking about. So, Tara, do you want to say anything about that? Well, you're nodding your head a bunch and Oh yeah, nodding my head a bunch for sure. And um, what I I love that story, Gavin. Thank you so much for sharing it. And I love the ongoing cultivation that's required of the culture that you're describing. That I think we often forget as leaders is always required in organizations as well. When I'm doing uh, work with organizational leaders, and we might be doing something that's a really important event-based thing that I'm as a consultant is stepping into. What I'm often reminded of that I need to help those leaders understand is how much ongoing curation, cultivation, time, effort, prioritization it takes to do that work on an ongoing basis. So I think maybe it would be helpful. You're here to hear a little bit more about what we're doing in Maine, I think, probably yeah. at a high level. <laughs> um, and so maybe it would be helpful for me to share a little bit about what our journey has been here, at least what, what my part of the journey has been. And we can see where questions come from there based on where you are at in the world. Um, going and just want to check in, is the mic okay? Everybody can hear me? Okay, great. Um, what I think we started with, for those of you who are on the call, is that Maine 
is kind of a different place. And so I, I think our story is very much seeped in Maine and how things work in Maine, um, in particular because of the size of Maine in terms of the population and the community. So just want to set the stage that that was a really driving factor in how some of this has unfolded. Um, in 2018, we established a conscious capitalism chapter here in Maine. And that really came from me going to the conference, the annual conscious capitalism conference, um, which was held in Arizona at that time. And there was no one else from Maine there. <laughs> and I was like, wow, that's really surprising because fundamentally people choose to live here. From, from a stronger values orientation place than other places I have lived in, in that you have to often have decided you're going to be here because it, it choose to have your career here because you can often make money, more money other places, working other places. And you've chosen to be in Maine because of what surrounds Maine and the quality of life and, and what you might want for yourself and your family or your loved ones. And so you've made a values oriented decision already to be here. And so we tend to have more people that values orientation discussions resonate with, which I think is an underpinning of all of the different ways that we do this work. Um, one of the underpinnings along with higher purpose and stakeholder orientation, I'd say. Um, and so that was why it was really surprising to me that I was the only person there from Maine. And what I became confident or motivated to do was say, well, I need to like share the philosophy around conscious capitalism with other people in Maine, because I think it would deeply resonate with them. And that's how we started the chapter. At the same time, lagging a little bit and certainly influenced a lot by COVID, the B Corp community was starting to build in Maine as well, uh, quite slowly. We have about 11 B Corps in Maine right now, um, many, many in the queue, but 11 um, certified my business is one of them. And that group was starting to think about how they would come together more formally. And if you're familiar with how things work in B Corps, they have like, similar to how conscious capitalism has with their chapters, there's like different tiers of, you can be like a organic, like really loose chapter. And then you can got, kind of go up the, the um, chain to be being more formal. And the group here um, was determining at that point in time, like how formal they wanted to be. And I was a part of both of the groups. <laughs> and so just to, to share, to think of the story of what I started to realize is in the context that we now operate in, there's a lot of collaboration within those groups, but we are, um, would be considered competing for the mind share and time of the same people <laughs> because yeah. it's kind of all the same thing. <laughs> We're all kind of trying to do the same thing, just different methods. And so I started to work with the leaders that, you know, there wasn't even designated leaders of the B Corp group because it was very informal, but started to work with the folks there. And then, uh, you know, we had the conscious capitalism chapter that was continuing to happen to start to see in, in particularly in the place of Maine, like Portland, Maine is 65,000 people. <laughs> it's really small. Like greater Portland is 250,000 people. We don't have many public companies. We don't have many big businesses. Um, it's, it's a state of 95% small businesses and lots of nonprofits as well. And so when you start to think about what that would be like to try to hold two flourishing groups at the same time doing that work, it, it to me felt really challenging. It felt like we were going to get into the mode of competing with each other consistently when that's not the ethos of any of this movement. And so um, what I'd say is because of the, the lack of structure, let's say on the B Corp side, and that was by choice, <laughs> they kind of didn't know that they wanted to be structured in that kind of, in those kind of tiers that the B Corp movement al allows. And so there was really no designated leaders. I, I initially was really trying to combine, officially combine the B Corp group and the conscious capitalism chapter into one and figure out what we would call ourselves. And I tried that for like a year, to be very honest. <laughs> I like tried it for a while. And the challenge was if you don't have leadership in both organizations like designated to figure that out together, you can't actually figure it out. I actually came to the conclusion finally <laughs> that like if the B Corp group doesn't have designated leaders, there's no one to make a decision with. Mm -hmm. And so we had to kind of, I had to have another path. 
And so that was the thought behind the main conscious business collective, which was the next phase of what I'd say the conscious capitalism chapter. And there's lots of examples of um, states doing similar things or, or individuals and in states doing similar things like Florida for good or um, good for Michigan. And you might be familiar with those initiatives in those states. So I got some inspiration from the folks there about what they had put together. They do it in very different ways, but I had this vision of the main conscious business collective could be the sort of one-stop shop to help. And this is all, you know, from a non not for profit, not designated, but like a, you know, not a profit or profit um, enterprise of like a place where people go to learn about what all these different methods, processes, philosophies, paradigms were. Um, because I truly believe that people, come, you know, different people and leaders need to come into the work at different places. Um, and by having a conscious capitalism chapter only at that point for me, made it feel like we were only talking about conscious capitalism when in fact, like I know, you know, the Connecticut chapter does, we talk about it in lots of varied ways, um, lots of different entry points. And so we've had the conscious, main conscious um, business collective for the beginning of 2020, I'm like struggling with the years, 22, <laughs> the beginning of 2022. So we actually closed the conscious capitalism chapter at that time in very um, amicable, collaborative way with conscious capitalism and move to this new model. And I'll, I'll be very honest that we're super experimenting with it still <laughs> to try to figure out how this all works. The interestingly to the story, like the B Corp group, again, pretty small has continued to meet. They have not formized in any um, way. And what I've come to realize through this process is that there are some very important B Corp only things that that group needs to continue to meet about that those stakeholders have different needs, um, particularly around marketing and helping people understand what the certification process is and being a certified B Corp is that we wouldn't really be undertaking in detail in the Main Conscious Business Collective. So I'm really feeling good about the way that all turned out, even though that wasn't my initial idea of how it would look that we would still have two groups, but it's so collaborative and we post all of our, all of their events on our site, they post um, uh, vice versa. We, you know, it's a really collaborative um, opportunity. I don't mind jumping in a little bit. Go for it. Just, uh, I'm one of the founding members of Be Local Connecticut. Um, I'm a, cons a B Corp consultant here in Connecticut. So we actually now have uh, 28 certified B Corps and we, are, we do try to collaborate with Conscious Capitalism. I'm glad this is sort of coming up and I think we could all do a better job of promoting each other's activities. You know, I'm thinking of this particular session even it would have been nice to promote. So we have to be, I have to be more mindful of that as well as things come up. But um, yeah, it's interesting to hear what's happened in Maine because I've been hearing a little bit from Maine folks. I worked with a company in Maine that just became certified recently, um, TideSmart. Do you know TideSmart Global? Yeah. 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 So yeah. Um, yeah, and just to get them more involved in the local community. And yeah, it's, it's not easy to engage everyone, you know, everyone. And, and, and it is true that conscious capitalism and be, whether it's be, be local or the B Corps, you know, we all are going for a similar thing, right? We all want, you know, um, to engage our stakeholders and sorry. Um, yeah, but I just wanted to mention that, that we are actually have established a nonprofit. We're a little bit more, we're further along in the process. So we actually went for the more structured, be local Connecticut rather than a Connecticut for good or anything like that, just because um, we felt that our community was growing also. Awesome. That's really exciting. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This might be a good point to mention, Carrie, and thanks for jumping in that uh, we'll have a joint event, I believe. June 13th is the date at Athletic Brewing in Milford. So that'll be a social time to get to know each other as Be Local folks and Conscious Capitalism of Connecticut folks. So how, how much do you think, Tara, folks in your group are interested in social types of events to gather and bond versus more formal kind of panels or professional development type things? Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, 
I've seen it to be more of the social types of events, to be honest. Um, we did as conscious capitalism chapter, and then a little bit at the beginning of the main conscious business collective, more uh, formal, I'd say focused events and, you know, with specific topics. And, you know, that had a pretty decent turnout, but I would say always a little bit underwhelming for how much effort it took to put it together. Um, whereas when we just hold social gatherings for people to get to know each other and get inspired from each other from their interactions, like lots of people show up. So um, it's a good, it, it, it's we're using that information about what people are typically showing up to to figure out and help us inform what the next stage of the main conscious business collective is as well um and that i think it will turn into something probably very different than what it looks like today as we gather more input from our stakeholders about what they need so that's kind of the process that we're in right now is figuring that out what do they need that different when the, from what they may be getting from the b corp group or many people aren't involved in the B Corp group because they aren't a B Corp. So we have a huge population of leaders that are very curious about what we're up to in various stages or actually practicing conscious leadership in some way themselves that um, have chosen to not be certified or have chosen um, to not do that at this time. Uh, and so we're trying to figure out how to meet their needs in the best way possible. And what I think we're probably, you know, people are a little bit tired from here for lots of reasons, um, is events or more like speak, people speaking at them. <laughs> I think what we're looking for is more ways to connect and collaborate and create community with one another. And that's something that we don't really know. I would say probably don't know how to do that that well. <laughs> um, like what is the forum? For that. Um, so we're, we're experimenting a little bit around um, what that could look like. Well, we're feeling that out as well. And these types of virtual forums are part of that ongoing experiment. So Gavin had a question come in about how you and Tara met. Do you want to tell the story? Um, I'm not sure I can really remember, but I, you know, I think, I think we just sort of reached out as, you know, chapter conscious capitalism, chapter leaders and and connected up that way is, is what I kind of, oh, I know. So I was, I was um, flitting about on different, you know, conscious capitalism group things, you know, I attended some things that Maryland had, some in Ohio, you know, just, you know, these different chapters that put on Zoom events during the, you know, COVID thing. And I was just having a good time popping in and out. And I was on, um, you know, popped into, you know, the main one and, and um, you know, it was fabulous. Um, you guys had a bunch of really great discussions, so I, I followed on, you know, some of those quite a lot. Um, the Boston group also uh, was doing that, um, and that actually ended up um, creating a segue where I ended up ending in, um, I'm in the Maine Angels investing group um, because I saw a friend of mine, Bobby Lamont, in one of your um, conscious capitalism zoom things and she said what are you doing in here and I'm like well you know and she's like hey you know you should join this other group too so anyway um yeah it's it's really cool making all of those connections and and seeing people and and that's one of the things that um you know so we're you know connecting people within a state or whatever in different businesses and everything but I think there's this huge opportunity also to connect people like across states to see what another you know a similar company you know, doing something in a totally different state, you know, what they're up to and what's going on. I think there's lots of opportunity there. I don't know how to do it, um, but I think there's there's lots of potential. And Kevin, you, that's, yeah, that's how I remember it too. And I remember, you know, working a lot with you and Glenn and a smaller other group trying to figure out, particularly from like the Northeast, like how could we collaborate more together as chapters? A lot of us were doing a lot of the same work and trying to put on events that we wanted to share across different platforms and trying to figure that out. And I think we were pretty successful at doing that for certainly the time where the, the main chapter was engaged with conscious capitalism. And, and at one of the think programs, well, I, Tara's popped off for a second, so I'll just say, but one of the things that they did- That was super fun to try to figure that more participants. Yeah. I was, I was just saying, going to say too, that, that one of the things that I thought was fabulous was the one um, you guys really dove deep into diversity, you know, justice, diversity, equity, and inclusion, the Jedi thing. And I thought that was, that was fabulous. You guys were right at the forefront, cutting edge of, of getting into all of that and, and getting that information out there. Um, 
So yeah, how much of this is just, you know, is structural structural in society and, and in systems and and you know, I that's might increase my awareness of that sort of thing is having another discussion with a guy just just this morning and and he was talking about similar sorts of things um and in the work that he's doing and, and trying to um hit um anyway that's a separate a whole separate segue yeah, that's awesome. um but anyway yeah yeah that was that was great work well and eleanor you put a great question in the chat i was just noticing around the the connecticut business community so just wanted to ask if anyone wanted yeah thanks just um, a bit of, of background on that. I was reading a, a book by an indigenous writer talking about how as um, settling occurred originally it, under colonialism, the, uh, the tribal nations got pushed from the Lenape in New York and the Wampanoag in uh, Massachusetts and actually kind of came to, you know, some of the, the um, different types of thinkers who weren't going along with the status quo or resisting uh, the, the infiltration kind of came together uh, here in Connecticut. So I just thought that was interesting as far as being um, a crossroads kind of since, you know, since there uh, started being contact from, you know, those, those different groups. Yeah, and I think culturally, I love what you said, Tara, about the sort of demographics of Maine and how they are um, more spread out, you know, in terms of population density and so on. And I think that creates um, the, there's also a sense of how do you reinvent yourself um, now, which is really topical in terms of what are you going to create around business opportunities that are going to solve the problems rather than add to them. And Gavin had some uh, a couple of examples earlier of industries that are reinventing themselves based on old technology, but adding a whole new layer of, of, um, of value. And I think that's a niche that Maine seems to occupy pretty well and, and do pretty successfully. So um, are there any kind of success stories that you feel are part of that? Yeah, I mean, there's so, because, I mean, the benefit we have in um, Maine or greater Portland in particular is because it is so small, everybody kind of knows each other in some way and can build connections with each other really quickly and figure out where there's synergies. So we have a number, and we have a number of higher ed institutions that um, fortunately and unfortunately like are competing with each other pretty often for, <laughs> for different um, partnerships with businesses and different student opportunities to learn. I'm looking at you know, some of the things in the chat related to that. So we have lots of um, incubator, entrepreneurial incubator types of programs here in Maine that are linked to the different universities and are led by business leaders in but I'd say that like the conscious leadership or conscious business space, I'd say that's where we've been really effective in trying to build an awareness of a different way of thinking about the purpose of business very early on in someone's um, business career or, or business aspirations. And we have a number of those happening um, and, and a number of leaders like myself who are asked to be um, faculty or curriculum members for some of those programs. And the, the positive piece about that is I haven't had much luck trying to, let's say, infiltrate the, the typical business or MBA curriculum at a university with the professors. <laughs> it's been more when there is an incubator type of program that's, that students or um, new leaders are going through that are that is sponsored or held by a nonprofit organization that you can um share your different ideas around what the purpose of business is and how to think about starting to build your business through those entrepreneurial programs um i i'd love to hear if anyone has had any luck with um talking about that through actual curriculum at an um, educational institution like a university or a college um, because we haven't had very much luck with able to do that here but i think that's where the biggest collaboration has come from one is business leaders nonprofit organizations and incubator programs all coming together to show a different path for potential business leaders as they're in a startup mode. I've had a, I've had a little bit of, um, so we, we've had a bit of luck um, 
um, talking to universities, we've got um, um, Sacred Heart um, University in, in Bridgeport, um, uh, and we've also been doing a lot with um, Southern Connecticut State University uh, and in, in New Haven. And I was a guest speaker just a couple of days ago um, for like a, a student group of um, sort of entrepreneurial, you know, students who, you know, are sort of on an entrepreneurial path and, and um, so they had a whole guest speaker program. I was one of maybe a dozen um, that come in, you know, every, every week and give a talk on some topic um, that are, you know, and they are subjects that they are not going to run across in, in their classroom. Um, so yeah, to your point, it's not in the main part of the curriculum, but we, we catch them here and there. Um, so it's a bit, a bit of luck doing that. Um, but yeah, it'd be nice to be able to figure out how to get it more deeply embedded, you know, actually embedded in the actual um, stuff. Because when you think about all the changes that are going to be happening, you know, with, with artificial intelligence, just, you know, on, you know, on just coming out and, and it's just going to be tremendous, huge changes in, in all kinds of things. But you know how human beings work together, how we collaborate, how we how we do stuff. All of those kinds of things are are not going to change. You know, other other things might change, but you know how human beings work is not going to change. So we need to. Um, we, those are those are are good topics that aren't being sufficiently covered now. And and if students learn about those things, those will be consistently useful for the rest of their lives. Versus some of the other things may you know pass out of all recognition within a decade and. People are like, yeah, we used to do that, but we don't do that anymore. Um, so, yeah, lots of lots of changing things coming along. It's really useful. I love how you're saying that, Kevin, of, to think about what won't change because we're always kind of talking about how many things will change and it feels yes. overwhelming to people. <laughs> but yes. if we stick with what we know won't change and then just work on getting better at better at that, um, yeah. that 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 seems to be really key. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So um, Kashish put a, a question in about students. Um, and so I just, I had a, a one thought along those lines that um, ran across the um, University of New Hampshire has a program um, that I thought was really interesting that um, students can uh, get involved in helping a company become a B Corp. Um, so, um, you know, it's obviously, it's a rigorous process. There's a lot of work to do. There's a lot of paperwork involved and everything. And, you know, also at the same time, you've got a whole bunch of students who are interested in learning about business and, and what a better way to get a real deep dive into a business and look at every single aspect of it than to help that business, you know, um, in the B Corp process, because you're going to get into every bit of it. Yeah. Um, so it, I just thought that was a fabulous thing, you know, it helps super way to help the business out fantastic way to help out um, the companies and everything at the same time. So um, that's just, that's just, you know, one idea. Um, and, and it's, that seems to be a logical thing that a lot of universities should be doing, uh, make a lot of sense for their business students and, and also for, you know, help all these businesses get going. Yeah. I'm so glad you mentioned that Gavin, because um, I actually am the business, business advisor for that program. Okay. <laughs> um, the, the leader of that program, who, her name is Fiona Wilson, actually lives in Maine, but she leads the Sustainability Institute at the University of New Hampshire. And under, as a part of the Sustainability Institute is what they call the B Corp Clinic, which is um, students coming in every semester, businesses applying to be a part of the clinic and um, them getting, you know, after determining a set of concrete goals that need to be achieved throughout the semester, working collaboratively together to reach those goals. And so it's really awesome to see the students learn an amazing amount. And I think this is a, and Carrie put in the chat something on B Academic. So this model is, is very much in strong collaboration with B Lab. Fiona is very tied in with B Lab. So this has been a model that I think they're trying to spread to other universities. I think, unfortunately, it is still separated or segregated out from the actual business or MBA curriculum at UNH. <laughs> so thankfully, you do have students that might be in those curriculums coming into the B Corp clinic. So there's like some cross pollination, so to speak, but it's still not, I think, what we're all aspire to be that business is actually taught differently. Um, but it's <laughs> amazing to see what the students are learning and what the, the benefit to the businesses is significant. They don't pay to be involved in this process. They get you know, a business advisor, they get a student team, and they make significant progress towards, 
meeting their um, B Corp certification goals. Some of them actually get to the point where they can submit for B Corp certification at the end of the process or certainly make great strides towards that. So yes, yeah, a super cool program that I wish was copied or emulated at least in lots of universities around the United States. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing that always struck me um, that, you know, lots of universities have psychology departments, sociology departments and things. And, and to be able to catch a company at the beginning of say a conscious capitalism type journey, you know, and, and um, study it, measure it, do interviews, that kind of thing. And then as it, you know, hopefully transforms and, and makes those changes, you know, doing more interviews, documenting, documenting what's going on, that sort of thing, so that you can, you can capture that sort of transformation would be, you know, a fabulous bunch, you know, of experience for somebody, you know, in a major like that, who might want to, you know, be consulting or working with businesses to, you know, to see that experience and be part of that documentation. And, and, you know, that could be part of, you know, getting a, you know, a degree of master's or something like that, uh, you know, and, and, and help the company out at the same time. And, and just, you know, a, huge amount of value to the overall business community of, you know, here's yet another example of, you know, a transformation and these are the things that happen. Um, yeah, so. For sure. Well, and it also makes me think in part of the promotion of this uh, event, we had mentioned some other ways that organizations get engaged in, in a conscious business or conscious company journey, like a benefit corporation or 1% for the planet. Um, and so I'm curious, is any, like, does anyone want to talk through some of those things? Because one of the motivations that I had around the conscious capitalism chapter transitioning to the main conscious business collective is in the conscious capitalism realm, we were constantly getting asked questions about what's a benefit corporate, like it's an alphabet soup of different weird terms that people don't understand. <laughs> Understandably, they don't understand them because um, I don't think we've done anybody any favors in the way that it's all been being talked about and what it's being called. Um, and so that was part of our motivation of being this place at, as the co main conscious business collective of like, we can share with you what we know about all those different potential methods. So you can make a decision on where the yeah. best entry point for you is. And part of my motivation for my own business is that I did all of those things so that I could experience it as a business owner myself. So as in my business as Conscious Revolution, we are a benefit corporation, a certified B Corp. We are conscious capitalism because I'm a certified consultant and we um, participate in 1% for the planet. <laughs> so um, we are not an ESOP. So I could say that maybe, maybe in the future, although worker collaboratives are more interesting to me actually at the moment. Um, there's lots, but there's, it's just proof to say that there's so many different ways that you can approach this work. And for me, it's been really important to experiment with all of them and learn what that process was like, particularly as I'm getting questions or helping clients potentially go through them, that I can understand what that real experience is like um, and maybe pass on some lessons learned about ways to do it that might make it easier for others. So I'm super happy to answer any questions about any of that, if that should be an area of curiosity for the group. Thank you, Tara. This is Soledad, also a board member of, of Conscious Capitalism, and I also work with sustainability, 1% for the planet. And I get this very often. There's a confusion from people, from, from companies. Okay, what is a B Corp? Why is it different from Conscious Capitalism? What does all this mean? And where, um, what is a good starting point for me, right? So I, I'm just curious if you get this type of questions as well. And you being part, you started the conscious capitalism um, chapter. And at the same time, you were part of the B Corp. And I know you're both you, within your own company, you have both. Where do you see the similarities and what things, what areas do you think that each one has their own, you know, B Corp has, as you mentioned, maybe everything that has to do with the certification and how do you connect it with conscious capitalism? That's yeah, smart. yeah, what a great question. Um, I do get that question all the time. So let's talk about what's all the differences between these two and what's the right entry point all the time. Um, I tend to think of conscious capitalism as like the philosophy overarching all of it. And then some different really important operational or implementation pieces in the other methods. Um, and so a lot of the times I do get a question of, I, I think I, you know, people are curious about being a certified B Corp and they'll say, I want to be a certified B Corp. Like, I think I should be a certified B Corp. And the first thing I'll say is like, tell me why, like, what's that about for you? 
And you have to listen really carefully, like, what are they saying? Because sometimes they just want to be like part of the thing, like part of the club. And that's a great sign that we're like making traction of people being interested. Um, but for me, I will, I will be quite cautious in recommending that any leaders move to being a certified B Corp without having a lot of the foundation in place naturally or, or sort of organically because then people feel like they're just, you're like kind of teaching to the test or checking off a whole bunch of things on a list and it doesn't feel authentic or integral to the way the business operates. And so that's where I think the philosophies of conscious capitalism can come in to be able to teach people to say like, what, where is the higher purpose? Which is actually, you know, is absolutely embedded into the B Corp certification process. Not exactly the same way, but there is a higher purpose component in the B Corp certification process, there is a cultural component there as well, particularly in the workers section, but in the community section too, there is a way to think about stakeholder orientation. I think that um, the B Corp certification is, is strong in the stakeholder orientation piece in a more tangible way than conscious capitalism is at this moment. Um, and so there's strengths that I talk about that um, are brought in so holistically to me, they feel like a complete package. <laughs> um, and I think they're all continuously evolving. Um, I think in any one of them, you can say you practice conscious capitalism and, and there's not a lot of measurements that come along with conscious capitalism. And so you can say you practice it, but no one has any idea whether that's true, <laughs> unless you talk to the people that work in that organization. The same is true really in, this, in being a certified B Corp, lots of measurements. But my, my common thing is none of these things are telling us what the experience is like of the people working in that organization yet. Yeah. Um, you can be a benefit corporation when, you know, the legal designation of a benefit corporation, um, which says that you have to provide a public benefit and have to think about stakeholders over shareholders as a part of your business practices. But it, but I think what we're all trying to get to is what does that feel like, that experience feel like of being a part of that organization inside and a part of a stakeholder connected to that organization. And I can't wait to see how this all evolves to actually get to that. Um, and so I'm talking most of the time when I'm getting questions around which one to choose is like, well, where, tell me about your values first and what, what you think is important in your own leadership journey what really motivates you. And for some, they get really motivated by, I want someone to raise the bar for me. I want someone to be like telling me what great looks like. And if that's the case, like, well, then really being a certified B might make sense for you because that's what they're going to do. Some leaders hate anyone telling them what the bar should be. <laughs> um, and they actually would have a totally different bar than what certified B, you know, B lab says which might, which would still be absolutely valid from a consciousness perspective, um, but, you know, conscious leader perspective. So um, it really requires some deep reflection and insight and, you know, conversations with, I think, people that leaders trust to be like, well, like, why would I be doing this? Because it will show through in no matter what path they choose. Um, and so that's what I'm constantly talking about with leaders. And then, you know, as you said, so that I'd like trying to educate, like, what is the difference between any of those things to begin with? Because that's usually, um, a real sticking point is like they can't, the language is so confusing that um, what I don't want people to do is give up for fear that it's like inaccessible to them. Of like, yeah, yeah, I, I know that's all happening, but I feel a little overwhelmed and it feels a little bit too complicated. And you know, people are super busy and distracted and leaders are really trying to do the best they can in all circumstances. So trying to make it as easy as possible to understand the differences and where your entry point might be. But I think it's so personal and specific to what, who the person is and their where their company is, what they might choose first. Does you know, that help? it's, it's interesting. It? Oh, I was going to say it's interesting um, um, what you're bringing up because in in my former life in manufacturing, you know, everyone knew oh you had to have sustainable products, you had to have sustainable products, and then until there was some sort of measurement system, whether it was you know. Uh, green guard or green circle or or forget about lead building any of that stuff because that was just like it was too overwhelming and and it seemed unattainable and and too expensive for the for the push that some building owners would get but specific products about you know how how um it, and everything was so measurable whether it was the natural resources you were using to actually produce that product or all the components that make up that metal, 
And in, unless that stuff was measurable, it didn't have enough, um, or, or only until that occurred, was it valuable to the stakeholder like the architect. And, and so from that point, it really is a clear point of differentiation uh, and value for a company. And I think what's missing here, whether it's, uh, you know, I don't, I admittedly don't have enough background information about B Corp, but um, from looking at some of the corporations that have been certified and knowing one or two of them, I'm like, really, how did you get that? <laughs> But um, I think until there's really a, a very clear measurable benefit that the world at large or a specific person buying that product has, it's going to kind of remain a philosophy. Yeah, you're bringing yeah. up such good points. And I'd say um, all of it's continuously evolving, particularly on yeah. the B Corp side, they're coming up with a whole new set, a whole new assessment. Um so they're determining what the next level is. And mm -hmm. they do that through a very collaborative process, as far as I can see or have been involved in, of, of figuring that out. But the, the interesting thing is, yes, there has been some questions and very public questions about some of the organizations that have become certified. And the challenge right now with the way the B Corp certification is structured is that you, know, you have to get 80 points in order to submit and 80 points have to be approved to be certified, but it can come out of any category. Right. So your, the, the flexibility is a benefit that you can pick and choose uh, what's most important to your business to achieve the most points. But some of those organizations that we might question might be quite low in an area that, in terms of points, in an area that we you know think is very important. Right. Yet they've excelled, you know, excelled at another area, and so they might be imbalanced overall, but still certified. Um, mm -hmm. And so the net, as far as I understand, and they actually um, have a public. Uh, feedback period on on B Lab for for this next version of the certification, but and which they delayed because they realized that they wanted to actually gather more input around what the next version of this looks like. And I think what so that you were asking like what might some of them do better than others. What I do think B Lab does exceptionally well is think about equity, diversity, and inclusion in a really deep way. And part of the reason why they delayed their coming out of the new certification requirements, which was supposed to come out in 2023 and is now gonna come out in 2024, is there's a deep consideration of equity in what the certification criteria look like in a way that lots of us haven't experienced or tried to figure out before. And many of the people who might come from more marginalized communities were saying, really, you have to make it harder for us to be certified even though for, for many of us were saying we want it to be a higher standard, like then, then who does that leave out of the possibility of being certified? So there's a whole host of different considerations that I think are really interesting that I think in the end, once it's all you know, worked through and collaborated through, will make us even stronger as an overall movement because I think any one of these particular ways of doing this, once they rise up to the next level, it challenges all of us to do that. So I'm really excited to see that. I see a couple of, oh, thank you. Um, Carrie's put in some really good specific stuff in the chat that I didn't have exposure to. So that's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I always, I, I think it's, it's, it's one of those struggles of, of, you know, if, if, you know, conscious capitalism is more of a um, spiritual journey, you know, aspirational stuff, principles, that kind of thing. Um, but um, it oftentimes people then go like, uh, okay, so I'm all inspired by this. I'm all excited, but like, how do I actually do it? You know, and they lack like, you know, where the, where's, what's, you know, how does the rubber meet the road here? Um, you know, and, and B Corp is all about how the rubber meets the road and how you measure how the rubber meets the road. And, um, you know, so the two things really go well together. And I love the how, you know, this discussion has been talking about like the entry point for somebody, you know, and and where they're coming from. So, you know, and and they're also just different personality type, you know, types too. So, you know, you know, business might need certain things. And so therefore they're, you know, tend to go a certain way. Um, and then there are just, you know, people who love to measure stuff. Um, and they will definitely be attracted to the B Corp thing. And there are people who like 
you mentioned before, like, don't tell me what to do or how to do it, you know, just like, give me the inspirational thing and I'll figure this out. Cause I can probably come up with something that's even better than, you know, whatever that standard was or something. But, you know, and I, I really did enjoy reading the, you know, the B Corp handbook um, and, and going through that and, and time after time, which is like, you know, in some section would come across the thing and just be like, wow, that is such a great idea. I'd never thought of that, you know? And so they'd be like, oh, cool. You know, here's the thing and I can implement that. Um, so, you know, I get excited about that and implement it in my own way and not really worried about, because for me, you know, keeping score was sort of like not my priority. Um, but, you know, lots of fabulous, you know, good ideas of way to, you know, ways to do things. So, you know, they're both really, really valuable um, approaches and, and, you know, depending what a company needs and depending on, um, you know, the personality of the company and the, the leaders and everything, you can start one place or the other, but you, you probably end up, you know, coming together with some sort of thing that combines both of them ultimately. You know, we've said people in our conscious capitalism group have, you know, gone towards B Corp, you know, movement and people who are B Corp, you know, certified and everything who then enter in the comp conscious capitalism movement and go like, wow, I was missing this whole thing over here. So this yeah. is great. So yeah, you need, you, it's both bits and uh, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. It's, you get different things and the same things almost like um, yeah. as you're involved in both. So I think that's really um, perfect the way you said that. And then I'd say like the benefit corporation, like being a legally designated benefit corporation, mm. that's been an interesting process for me because I was really curious actually what the accountability would be. Because <laughs> in Maine, we just got the ability to be a benefit corporation in 2019. So I actually transitioned into a benefit corporation. I already designated my company as an LLC. Um, I had changed over already to an S corp. Then I um, became a benefit corporation. And, you know, part of my learning on that was like the tax process of that was really a pain, uh, really terrible. <laughs> so I would say like people should try to transition maybe at the beginning of the year. Like there's some good things I could share with people around that. But what I was really curious about is, you know, our secretary of state here, you're, you're registering with the secretary of state. And like, when was it, when would anyone ask me where my annual report is? Because that's what you're supposed to be showing to the world that you have that you provide a public benefit through this annual report it's a part of your requirements as a um, benefit corporation and i'm very happy to say that as of a month ago we did get a request from the secretary of state to to produce our annual report um because i was actually worried that we didn't have any of those uh, me mechanisms to follow up uh, in place and I don't have the experience in other states, obviously, but I can say at least within the state of Maine with a relatively new law that people don't really understand yet um, that they are following up and asking for those things. Now, I don't know, it would be interesting when we submit it, which will be in the next month, like what happens? Like, do they scrutinize it to determine whether we are saying in there that we provide the public benefit that links to our designation as a public benefit corporation, like all of that's to be unknown um, for, for me personally to go through as a business owner, but I was really um, happy to hear that we got the request, like the formal request <laughs> that shows there's accountability that's being built into the system in some way. No, I just want to thank you for your time. I know you're, you've got a very elegant way of unpacking these things and today was no exception. And I think we all share the same uh, endpoint and just getting there as quick as we can as a community is important. And um, so just grateful for your time and your continued spirit. Oh, thank you. I'm grateful for the partnership with with all of you and, and Gavin and Glenn as we continue to do this you know, work together. Really appreciate you reaching out to me to ask me to do this. It's been really fun. And I appreciate it. And anyone feel if you have other questions that we didn't get to or something more specific that comes up for you later, then please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'd be happy to share any of my experience that I can.